Um, did you have a good night? It's very hot out there, isn't it? <laughs> good. Very good. Well, today, today uh, we would like to discover briefly, um, now that we are talking about evangelism this morning, the whole day, we would like to find out if we are uh, fishers of men or keepers of the aquarium. Yes? That's what we want to know. If we are fishers of men or keepers of the aquarium. Because if we are fishers of the aquarium, you just have to put the batch in front of it and the cup, and you stand in front of the church with a big stick. So we are going to take a look at that to see if we are fishers of men or keepers of the aquarium. And um, if we forget everything we say today, every, everything that we say today, if we forget everything, I would like you to remember this. This is the heart of, the, of uh, what we are going to discuss today. Before you bring the visitors, we have to clean the house. Amen. Yes? Oh, you didn't hear me. You still, you, you are dizzy because of the hot outside out there, the hotness. Before we bring the visitors, we have to clean the house. No? Imagine you invite or somebody invites a friend and say, I would like to invite you to my house to come over and eat with us. And then uh, me and my wife will be there. We would like you to come and bring your friends or if you are single or, or your wife, if you are married, and your children, if you are married and have children, come over to everybody. And then you go there. The day comes. You, you do a beautiful uh, brochure. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And, and, and nicely color and what amazing um, um, uh, promotion and advertisement. And in the picture of the brochure, it, 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 there is a picture of, uh, it, sorry, in front of the brochure, there is a picture of the whole family. Everybody smiling like this. <laughs> Everybody together, happy, harmony. It's, it's a loving place. Come and join us and eat that day. That was for your friend that you did this. So they are excited about it because it's a beautiful place. The picture says a lot about the place. It's very inviting. So they come in. So the day comes and you say, okay, the day came in and this is the address. They are right there and they look at the house. They look at the house. Is this the house? Is this the house? Look like Adam's family house. They are looking at it. They get to the door. There you come out. And everything, the door is covering spider webs. You move the spider webs, come in, don't worry. You come in, they come in, and when they get inside the house, they see that the carpet is not flat like this one, that it has a lot of little mountains there. Oh, what is it, what is it that you have there? They say, oh, this is where we put our garbage, you know. We don't vacuum here. We put it under the, the carpet, and there, this is where it stays. Oh, wow. And, uh, whoa, I see that you have rabbits. Oh, no, that's Jimmy, and he's a rat. And so he's walking all over the place, mold all over. When they, when they open the fridge, you know the fragrance that comes out of there, enough to kill an elephant. And so they ask you, Do you would you like some juice? Yes, I would like some juice. Oh, we have tomato juice. You like tomato juice? Of course I do. They put the glass in the table. The, the, the wife takes a tomato, or the husband takes a tomato, and squeeze it with the bare hands in front of you. You would like some more? You know. And then what happens is that the time for the food comes, the plate seems to be that the last time they were clean were when they were bought. They open and the, the, the food is beautiful. The food is good. The food is nice. They are now distrusting because right, you know, the environment is not too inviting, but the food is nice. However, it's, pro it's, it's, it's probably two things might happen. They will never come back even though the food was good. Probably. They will never come back if the food was good. Or, 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 listen to this, which is even worse now. Or they will say, honey, 
We found a place that reflects our own home. We stay here. And we'll perpetuate the spider webs and the rats that are here. We will bring more rats now. And so they finish the story. Do you see what we are saying? Yes. That before we bring the visitors, we need to clean the house. Good food may be presented. But all the spider webs are there. And all the rats walking around. And all the garbage under that carpet. My, and of course, and when you open the fridge, my scare. And the way you do the juice, my scare. We are living in a, in a, in a um, century where people are not only looking for being convinced about me having the truth, but, 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 all, but also about the way you treat them. Yeah. Listen, that is it's a horrible thing to happen to a pastor that says, so when somebody comes to you and says, Pastor, I would love to keep on coming to your church. But since I started coming here, I am losing my faith in God. And now I'm visiting. I'm visiting a Catholic church there in the Catholic Brothers, and they treat me like a human being. I'm happy there, Pastor. I'm growing. This is like a whoosh in the face. But sometimes we justify our wrong attitudes, and we baptize it, we baptize it in the truth. Well, we are doing this, but we have the truth. No problem. Many people will go to hell with the truth. Yes. You didn't hear me, what I say. Yes. You sleep into this morning. Many people will be there. With, they will be there burning with the 28 under the arm. <gasps> oh, no, he didn't. Yes. Because people in this age, in this, we are, people are looking not only for being convinced about what the book says, but the only gospel some people will ever see in their lives is you. The gospel according to you. They have heard about the gospel about, uh, according to Matthew, about Mark, uh, the court according to Luke, and according to John. But they want to see the gospel according to you. And so before bringing in the visitors, the first step towards heavenly evangelism, if you allow me to use that word, is cleaning the house. Making a space for them to come. If, if we don't do that, then... We are opening the doors to either two things. Number one, that people will come and say, wonderful, it makes sense, but I can't come here. I'm losing my faith. Or, honey, this is what we want. This is it. In the Bible, there is a house that was dirty, and you have heard about it, in, Mar in, in Matthew chapter 12. Do you remember that parable? And, and we, will just, we can do justice to the parable this morning. But there is... There is um, um, there are some principles there that I'd like to share, share with you. And in Matthew chapter 12, it speaks about a house that previously was very dirty. And then the Lord cleaned the house. The Lord cleaned the house. Matthew 12. And then you know the story already about the bad spirit that came back. Remember the story? Okay. And so the, the Lord says that, he goes around the spirit looking for a resting place, and he doesn't find it. And then in verse 44, the bad spirit says, Then I will come back, and I will return, <clears throat> sorry, I re re will return to my house from which I came. And when it comes, it finds us empty, swept, and put in order. And then it goes and brings along several other spirits, more evil than himself, and they enter and live there, and the last state of that person is worse than the first. Look at what's happening here. The house was dirty before. Now the Lord comes in and starts like a Cinderella Christ, cleaning everything. And not only he sweeps the house, and then he takes all that thing that was under the carpet. And not only that, he does not only uh, clean the fridge, but also he puts the things in order. So he not only cleans everything and says, now we are clean as so we, we can do whatever we want here. He said, no, no, we are clean, and so now we, knew, we need some order. It's exactly what he did, he did in creation. Number one, he, he said, well, there is the, the, the earth. It's a big mess. He started first filling in and putting things in order, dividing the waters, and then the waters over there. Remember that? Then he put man in there. So it's a way of the Lord um, uh, working. 
in, with human beings and in everything that he does, he cleans and then puts things in order. Because it's impossible for you to have an, an orderly life when you are not clean, right? That's why, that's why he didn't give the law in Egypt, right? He had to take them out of Egypt and then give the law. And sometimes we want to give the law there in Egypt. Well, impossible. And so there he is. He sweeps and cleans the house. And now the, the, the bad spirit says, wow, this place is, uh, let me, I am looking for a resting place. And the rest of the devil is not like the rest of the, of the Lord. He rests where, where there is filth and where there are rats going all over. This is where he rests because he feels comfortable there. He feels at home. He can sleep there. You know that the work of the devil is to destroy and to cause division. Well, he rests in a place that is destroying and caused and, and is divided. Where, wherever there is division. And there is tribal fight. And there is a, a struggle for authority. He rests. He sleeps. Because he's saying, well, guys, we don't have anything to do here. Let's go to sleep. They are doing our own job. We don't even have to move here. This is holy, 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 uh, holy day, vacation. They are doing our job. So he's looking for a resting place. He doesn't find it. He comes to the house that was before what we said at the beginning. And he finds it clean, swept. Shining, everything in order. In order. And then he says, <clears throat> this is too good for me to enjoy alone. Look at this. And this is too much work for me to do alone. Too much things to destroy. Too much people to break and discourage. Too much people happy that I have to make miserable. I need some more help. And in that you see that even the devil recognizes when he who needs help. And he works in unity. The devil believes in unity. And before, in this chapter 12, you will see that the Bible says that they were accusing Jesus of casting demons in the name of, of Belzebub. And he said, no, no, no. If Satan is divided against Satan, his kingdom will go down. In other words, he said, the devil, if there is one thing that he has, is that he is united. He doesn't play around. He has too much things to do and destroy too much plans to frustrate, and he needs all the backup he can get. But you know what? There are people that, that need to, I don't know if I even can say this. I will sound a little bit unorthodox, but there are some people that need to, to, to learn from the devil. There are people that can't work together. And even the devil, he recognizes and they fight. Don't think that they get along and love one another. They fight. They hate one another. But when, well, you know what? I remember last year I tried to destroy that family that it was your job. I know. You let me down in front of the boss. I know. I'm sorry for that. Okay, come here. Now we're going to destroy this church and these people together. Yes, yes, let's go. And they put aside their differences. And they work together for your destruction. And we cannot get together for other people's salvation. Not even for our own salvation. <clears throat> And so the house is swept. He says, too much work for me. This is too big for me. I don't care if I get <clears throat> the credit. <clears throat> I don't care who gets the credit as long as the work is done. <laughs> but this is what he's saying too. He doesn't care that who is getting the credit. The devil said, I don't care who gets the credit. You guys, I need your help. I'm called by the mobile area code 666. Guys, where are you? And they came in. Now, the, story, the, the thing is that they got in so easy. Don't you see this? <clears throat> the house is clean. The house is in order. There is a church manual. There are guidelines. There is a board. There is a pastor. That our department is in order. People give the receipts when they, when they spend some. They say, I, I wasted money. So trust in me, I'm Christian. He, no, no, they bring the receipts. You know, just like in your church, I'm my amen. They bring it. They have a, an agenda. There is order there. And it's clean. But they get in very easy. We're talking about the first step to evangelism. Amen. And we said that before bringing the visitors, we need to clean the house. So we're still here. Yes? First thing, they get in so easy. Why did they, how did it, what happened? 
What happened? Why did they get in so easy? Well, I'll give you two, two reasons. I gave you one already. Number one, they work together. They got a good plan. They analyze the situation. He came to the door, and then he looked around. And when he looked around, then he went back. He analyzed and placed the check, and he came back with a big plan and said, well, I saw, and there is this entrance, and there is this entrance, and that entrance. I'll give you one that is not explicitly mentioned here. There was nobody at the door. It's not mentioned, it's please, but it's there. There is no one at the door. Maybe the door was open. We don't know. But the third one is that the house was empty. The Lord <clears throat> was in that house <clears throat> once. If you read the chapter before, he says that the strong man get into the house and tied. Thank you so much. He tied the owner of that house, and he took away what he had taken. So that was the devil. He got into the house, and he cleaned the house. So the Lord was there once. We don't know how long was that. But he was there once. Now the house is empty. But it's in order, and it's clean. So it's not enough to have a clean house. You can have a clean house in order, full of demons. There are a lot of religious things out there. There is a church manual. There is a board. There are departments. There is an agenda. There is a plan. There is order there. And we are not sweeping things under the carpet. We are resolving our issues in order to prepare the way for the Lord. However, a house can be in order. I'm full of religious items around and have the Holy Communion every three months right there and still be full of demons. That's horrible. So being, and now you will say, what, what, where is he going? Be having the place in order and with absence of Whatever sins may be visible is not enough. The house has to be full. And the house is full only when Jesus Christ is there. Look at this. It's in order. And it's clean. But it's empty. Because when Jesus is not in the house, the house is empty. The building can be packed with millions of people and thousands. And if Jesus is not, is not there... The house is empty. The only person that fills the temple in the Bible is God. Nobody else fills the temple. Nothing else, nothing else, nothing else replaces the presence of God. And we have become, or we, we have arrived to the point where we have replaced transformation with information. We can have information without any transformation. And we can have religion without God. Because religion is exactly that. Re and ligare. And re, as you know, is again, remember, rebuilding. And reconstruction and reschedule. Re is again. And ligare means to be fused. And mix. So religare is to be fused again or get together with somebody with something again. Not necessarily God. You heard that. That you can have religion without God. And that the rights and the stuff can replace the person. You heard what I said. And that we can hide between the rights and the stuff. 
in order to maintain our religion without God. Because if we, have a, if we are united with God, then we will see the real things and we will have to deal with a lot of garbage under the carpet. And we don't want that. So you can have religion without God. So that is why it was so easy for them to get in there. They possess everything. Not so with the primitive church. And um, what we have established in this, in this session is that we need to clean the house before bringing the visitors, but we need to give God his house. For us to have a successful evangelism, we need to give him back the control. And we will have to bow down and say, sorry, Lord, I was wrong. Sister, I'm so sorry. And this is what happened in the primitive church in Acts. Remember, it's Acts chapter 2, that they were confessing. So that is taking things out of the carpet. And the Bible says that they had everything in, in common. They were working for the, for the well-being of others. I tell the church, we want to make this place so good that when people come in here, we have to push them out. We, we have to say, the service is over. We have to call the deacons for, in order to drag them out. They are enjoying so much, they don't want to leave. We have to make this place so loving. The atmosphere of this place so inviting that people can't wait for next Sabbath to come back. Even the little animals go to places where they feel safe. And I'm not saying not to give them good food. This is what we established in the first parable. Always giving good food. But you will notice that there are places and churches with less doctrine and less Bible and much less Greek and Hebrew and logic and all of that. And they are packed because they are treated like human beings. You won't believe what I will tell you now. When I was in America, we were giving leaflets and we were having a concert in the, in, the, in the streets. I think I shared that once with somebody. And we found him, a, a young man, and we say, he was all dressed in black, and he has some uh, skulls here, skulls over there. He, who was, uh, a, a, he, he looked like, a, like the valley of the dry bones, all over the skulls. This, this, this. And then, oh, what are you doing, guys? He said, oh, well, we, we are doing trials. We're coming from the university over there. Oh, yeah, I used to go to church, too. I was a Christian, too. Really, you were a Christian? Yes. And so now where you are? Um, well, I go to the church of the devil. Just like that. And where you go, he said, I said oh, I, I go to the church of, of the other one. <laughs> the, <laughs> you know, <laughs> God. <laughs> he said, oh, really? And, and uh, what, what make you go there to the church of the devil? I said, I was a Christian, but... Um, I was treated so bad in the church where I was. Listen to this. I was treated bad. It was not human what I was going enduring there. I lost my faith in the church. I lost my, first, my faith in God. I lost my faith in God in church. And so one day I was just there in a bar, and then these guys were there in a small group, and they treated me so good. Listen to this. The people of the church of the devil. Treating people good. And he, they, they treated him so good that he went to their church. You see what I'm saying here? I remember I used to work in a place, a fast food store, from 11 in the night to, um, um, to 7 in the morning. It's 10 minutes, right, Pastor? Yes. So I don't, I don't, I don't want to cross the time because I was told by the pastor, uh, one, he was very strict, and he told me, listen, you have only until 2.30 in the afternoon, so we don't want you to go over there. Yeah. <laughs> no, he did <laughs> You are fired. <laughs> and there I was in that place, and then I saw that lady. She was a prostitute. She was a prostitute. And, um, and, um, 
And I used to see that place, that, that lady, in front there was a, a, a bus stop. And I was working in that place, a fat food store, making the salad and the milkshake and the sandwiches and everything for next day to be ready. And that night, something told me in my heart, go out there, give her a sandwich and a, and a, and a juice or something. And I know that it was the Lord who, who did that to me, who told me that. I went there, and I came. It was about 2.30 in the morning. And so I came there and said, listen, um, I, am, I work over there in this uh, store, and um, um, I just made this for you. Maybe you're hungry. I said, oh, my son, yes, I am so hungry. And so she took the, um, the sandwich, and she took the juice, and we, I was seated there. She was very famous and well-known, and the pastor was right in front of the, the, of the street there. So at 2 o'clock, 2.30 in the morning, I sat down with this prostitute eating and making jokes and all of that and talking, and she was so happy that, and where do you live, and where do you go? I said, I go right there to the church that is in the corner. The church was right in the corner. Oh, the little yellow church. Yes, that one. And you know, from where does a member of the church appear at 2 o'clock in the morning? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Why? And so they pass by, Pastor! You know? <laughs> But they knew me, and they knew what I was doing there, and I was working there. Well, <laughs> goodbye, goodbye. Next Sabbath, I was directing the song service there. Oh, we marched into science, and all the saints were in the spirit until <laughs> the first elder came in and said, um... There is somebody out there that wants to see you. Um, it's the, you, we know her, the, the young lady that works in the, in the corner. And uh, she says that uh, she, uh, that you guys were together a few nights ago and that they have a good, <laughs> great, that you have a great time together. <laughs> it was like, So I came out, she was not even in the church, she was outside. Our church was, the church is here, that is a sidewalk, and then the street. So she was outside because she was not worthy of stepping in the yard of the church. And she was waiting there with her elbows like this, and with a smile like this. <laughs> it was that one! <laughs> I came out. And I remember the first elder in the back, look. <laughs> we lost him, Jerry. <laughs> she came in, and as a good Pharisee, I was in front of the church people, so I couldn't be friendly anymore, because the church people would think. But you know what I discovered? That usually you are, will accuse me of things that you either are doing or that you know that you had a chance you would do then. I've been accused of many things. And later on, one, two, three years, whatever it is, I discovered that the person that was accusing me of that thing, at that time, that person was doing exactly that. You know that it's like... For me to take the attention out of me, <laughs> let me switch it. And you can fabricate that so well because you know that area very good. You dare. So that's why you have the arguments. It's so logic. It's true. Of course it's illogic. You're doing it. And so I have to be a good Pharisee. I know. Oh, 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 yes, I, rem I remember, you know, this very distinguished with the pinky. Oh, see, I remember you. You know what she did? She brought, oh, of course, it's me. The other night, she grabbed my um, arm, pulled me, and hugged me. <laughs> no, no, look at this guy, this guy, whoa, 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 this guy. <laughs> she was famous, and to make it short, she got baptized and she's in church today. Today. Today she's in church. 
I grew up hearing about a famous, very famous man. He was homosexual, and I was 15 years old, and the Lord impressed me to go to that house. I, I grew up, he, this man is a legend, a legend in the neighborhood. And I just heard that name all over the time, James, James, James. I was 15, and something told me, go to his house. I went to his house, beautiful house, well decorated. Knock the door. He came out very friendly, say, hello, little child, what do you want? And I told him, I just wanted to tell you that the Lord loves you very, very much. I grew up hearing about you. I'm not a big fan, but I have heard about you. And uh, you are famous. Come in, come in, 7 o'clock in the morning. And in my life, we have, in, my, in my country, we have what, they call, what is called blackouts. Blackouts? The electricity just go. <laughs> and while I was there, it happened. We were seated there, the light went off, and I felt that hand in my hand. I said, Lord, not like this. Not like this, Lord. Is there a light, a candle, this little light of mine, let it shine, let it shine. Fast, let it shine fast. Don't worry, I'll get a candle. Yes, yes, you go and get a candle. Tell me anything else. The Lord loves you. I didn't know anything. I was newly baptized two months. Well, the Lord loves you. And uh, he, uh, he walked in sandals. And it's difficult to walk in sandals in the heat. So he must love you a lot. Uh, because he walked for you. And then he died. And, uh, and you are very important. And he started crying. And he told me, I was 15. You don't know how many times I have tried to get out of here. And I feel, like, I feel like a devil pulling me back. Pulling me back. And he threw himself on the floor and started crying. And crying. And crying. And I lift him up. And I, <laughs> I remember I was 15. I said, I understand you. I said, you do? I said, well, yeah, you know, in another level. I also understand, I understand you. And he cried and cried. I will make it short to you. Let me tell you one thing. He is in church today. Amen. He is my best friend, my sister's best friend. He is the assistant of the pastor in the church. Amen. He is the one who decorated the place for when I was going to get married. Amen. And today, the gift that he used to ask from friends before was something else. Today, he asked for a Bible, a shirt, and a necktie. Amen. And he calls me my son. And I feel proud of it. And I call and say, I love you so much. Yeah. Many, uh, what, did I, what did I do? I simply told them, you are welcome here. You know, brothers and sisters, in the Bible, the Bible says in, in, in Acts 2, verse um, 46 ahead, that the church had such an atmosphere of, uh, of respect and forgiveness and communion that the Lord brought every day those who were going to be saved. They didn't even need to give a campaign. The Lord said, now it's safe for me to bring people in here. There are places where the Lord can't bring people because they will, they will become atheists. Or they, but now people have things in common. There was not a church of the people of my nation or my language. It was everybody's church in the Lord. There was not a, a, a fight for a tribal fight over power or charge or control or, or who is who in here. Everything was common. The, the, the king was God. God was the king. And when the Lord said that that atmosphere was such that they, that, that they forgave and that they were working uh, uh, hard towards unity. You, you, you have to fight to have unity. Because there are people that are so dysfunctional that if there is not a fight in the church, they don't feel comfortable. They come just for that. In the morning, they are just like this. <laughs> I'm going to oppose today. I know I'm going to... What are you going to oppose, honey? Whatever it is, say, I'm going to oppose it. What about you agree? Then if I agree with it, I will disagree with the man or the woman and I will oppose it anyway. People that grew up like that, under the whip 
under the rigidity of the call of the dictatorship based, falsely based on God. People that do not have Jesus as God, but something else. A God made by their own, our own culture or experience. And we have now, God at the beginning made man in his image. Now we have made God in our image. And now we are worshiping that false idol. And we are shouting to people that this is what you have to get, otherwise you will be lost. But God is bigger than that. And there are people that are accustomed to have that. The field and the rats and the spider webs. And that is why I need Jesus and you too. Amen. Amen. Because we need help. We, need, we will need a heavenly therapy that will tell us like the Israelites. Allow me to say this very, very fast. The Israelites didn't digest being well treated. When God was treating them well in, 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 in the desert, they have to say, oh, we remember Egypt and how nice we were. Listen to that. They miss being kicked and slapped. They were so accustomed to be slapped and kicked and whipped that, that God is now treating them well. And they, they can die. What do you want from me? Why are you treating me so? Because they are not accustomed to be well treated. They have that image of Osiris or Ra or, or, or other God. And they brought that. And they were always looking back. And some of us probably are like that. We have been so accustomed to division and struggle and fight and, and carpets and dirty fridge that this is what is normal for us. But it's not normal for the Lord. And it's not normal for you. And the Lord wants something better for you. Amen? Yes. Would you like that? Something better for you. Yes. The Bible says that he brought them. It was so easy because people felt attracted and welcome. Somebody called me crying once and said, Pastor, I'm leaving. Why? Because I have been here for two years. And the only person that has said good morning to me is you. And there are churches, you go in and you come out, wonderful food. But people are in their own group and their own group. There. And people feel that cold shoulder and they don't come back. So the Lord wants them to reverse that and make our atmosphere so loving and so inviting that people can wait to come back. Amen. Brothers and sisters, before bringing the neighbors, we have to clean the house. Amen. Amen. May our churches be so inviting. May the Lord give us such an atmosphere, so loving and welcoming that we don't, we, that people come alone. Let me tell you, just to go one thing that has been happening in our church is that <clears throat> we don't know where to put the people now. We don't know where to put the people. And I haven't given a single week of prayer. I, have, <laughs> I am there for a year, and we haven't. But I told the church, how do you want to, rule, to run this church? I'll tell you this. I believe in a place where we don't have to scream, that we don't have to insult one another, that we don't have to backstab one another, that we can disagree in something, and we don't have to take that personal and be enemies for that, that we can be mature enough to disagree and keep on being friends, that I don't, in gangs, we don't have to have gangs. I believe in not having gangs, the South versus the West, and, and everybody in the morning shooting, and they are coming here, you know, they, are they there? Yes, sir, they are coming. They are coming, sir. You know? I told him that. I tell I believe in a place where we put an end to gossip. I put an end where if you are gossiping, then we'll say, sister, what is it that you are saying? So, pastor, I'll, just 20 seconds, 20 seconds, 20. <laughs> he cannot be elder. Why, sister? Because he was in a place drinking. How do you know that? Because I was there. <laughs> okay? And... Um, did you see him drinking? He was next to a bottle. Did he touch the bottle? No, uh, no I didn't see him. Did you see him taking the bottle in his hand? No. Did you by any chance hear a sound like glue, 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 glue? <laughs> no. Do you want to proceed and bring this topic to the board? No. Then you need to do two things. Stop it. Because you have no evidence. And you were there. 
And that's the policy. And you know what we did in our church? All of us took a vow of having a godly, welcoming, and loving atmosphere. And as soon as something goes out of that, that is not Christ-like, we will kindly address it. As the Bible says, that is it. And everybody voted yes. Some people that used to love that are not there anymore. And sometimes the Lord needs to clean some benches in order to bring the people that will be safe. I don't fight for members. <laughs> Uh, no, 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 no. I need to go. God bless you. <laughs>